Hello and welcome everyone to program information session about data strategy, leveraging data as a competitive advantage. This is a course from UC Berkeley Haas Business School. My name is Rudy Rudy Fallad. I'll be your moderator today. And I'm just going to wait for a few more seconds until you all get in, because I often joke that uh, Zoom security is not so bad as you, as some people tell you, uh, because we are carding everybody at the door. We're making sure you're at the right place, which is the program information session data strategy, leveraging data as a competitive advantage. So I see a number of you already made it uh, to our virtual house uh, campus on uh, Berkeley. So maybe you can tell us also in the chat where you're connecting from, that would be great. So you can use chat or Q&A also during, uh, during this webinar um, for your questions, doesn't matter which one as you prefer. Um, ideally, just one, obviously, uh, so that we uh, answer all of your questions. We're looking forward to your questions. You can raise your hand as well if you want to speak up, but make sure that you set your response to everyone or all attendees so everybody can see that. So I see Houston, Texas in the house. All right. And uh, Canada and uh, Portland, Oregon. Okay. Anybody else? All right, I see Minneapolis, Minnesota, okay. New York City, so East Coast as well. Uh, thank you for joining in the morning. If you are on the West Coast, thank you for watching this from the recording afterwards as well. Uh, we'll give you some information that you can use and uh, you can follow up on uh, what do you see here. So anybody else who can tell us where you're connecting from? So, all right, so we got uh, West Coast, East Coast, and everything in between. Fair enough, all right? So today you're going to hear from uh, Professor Richard Hansinger. He's the faculty in this course. He's this Distinguished Teaching Fellow in Operations and IT Management at Berkeley. And uh, I will let him speak uh, very soon because you definitely want to hear from him. What is this program about, right? And as I said, my name is Rudy or Rudolf Allat, and I'm a moderator with Emeritus an emeritus partner with uh, Berkeley to deliver this program to you. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to give you a bit of an introduction about UC Berkeley. We're going to talk about why data strategy is needed, why uh, this is important, why are we here? How can you actually turn it into a competitive advantage? Because many companies these days talk about being data-driven, having perhaps even data strategy, but not so many derive tangible business benefits from it. So. Who are you and who should attend? Is this a course for me? We're going to talk about this as well. And then of course, the key takeaways from the program, the highlights, the curriculum, uh, we'll talk about um, how your learning experience will look like. In other words, uh, will there be a project to do? Yes, there will be. It's, you know, we'll have a capstone project. We'll do case studies here as well. Richard will talk about his colleagues as well, the program faculty, and uh, of course, guest speakers that also will appear in the videos on the program. And then at the end of the day, uh, some people may not want the certificate. I would highly recommend you do go for a certificate because once you put so much hard work into this, it's also good uh, to let other people know about uh, that you know about this, right? And this is also a start of your journey to alumni benefits with Berkeley. So we'll talk about that in a second. So if you've been to Berkeley or not, in any case, I hope that you've heard about the university because you're already here. Uh, but I want to highlight that this is a global university, very famous, very established, and very um, proud of uh, its faculty. And that is because of the quality of the teaching and the research as well, right? So it's about teaching and research. And uh, we will give you a bit more stats as well to see what the rankings are and why Berkeley is uh, so well regarded. Um, also, uh, it was founded in 1868. So not just yesterday, it's been a while, while, you know, and Berkeley maintained its reputation throughout. It is based in San Francisco Bay Area, right? So not too far from San Francisco. You can perhaps run from Berkeley to San Francisco. I don't know, right? Uh, I, I took a bike, so, and it was an e-bike, I must say, all right. so. You can do this across the bridge. Uh, it's a flagship institution of one of the 10 UC research universities. 
It is number one, ranked number one in data science and top 10 in business analytics and um, in business analytics. And then it's number one public university worldwide um, and top 10 in uh, analytics, according to uh, US News and World Report. Okay, so let's just talk about a little bit. Why are we here? Because you may hear everywhere, you may be bombarded by people talking about big data, data, data analytics, right? Uh, we created 98% of the data that exists in the world in the past two years. By the way, this quote, it first appeared 10 years ago, right? And it's probably still valid, right? So imagine that uh, the, the pace of creating uh, big data is accelerating. Now, what can we do with this? That's the, really the question, right? Of course, uh, a lot of people talk about AI uh, since last November, but the AI has been here at least since the 50s, if not longer, right? But since Dartmouth conference, of course, it's been around. We went through some good times and bad times. And uh, we've got big data, which is not just a bunch of data, but it's data that is too big and too complex for traditional computers to manage. And this is all related to the cloud companies, right? So you see that uh, there's a huge demand for cloud services. So we've got big data, we've got AI uh, on the rise, we've got cloud services in demand, and uh, what can we do with this, right? As I said, many companies talk about being data-driven, but can they do derive, can they derive any business benefits out, for, out of it, right? So these are the insights and capabilities or skills that you will learn about in this program. It's going to take two months. Uh, we think it should take you four to six hours per week. Um, it's obviously uh, depending on, it depends on your interest, right? You can go uh, deeper in some of the topics that will take you a bit longer, right? But uh, in any case, uh, what I also wanted to highlight is Berkeley and Haas being close to uh, Bay Area. It's not about the weather, but it's about proximity to Silicon Valley, right? So it's about proximity to technology businesses in the U.S. to innovation and uh, and not and just because it's physically close, but it's because it's influencing what the faculty knows, what the faculty can uh, research, and of course, the availability of guest speakers. So all of this is about business. This is uh, pr primarily a business course, but focusing on how to leverage technology, how to leverage data, how to create your data strategy so you can uh, derived um, tangible benefits from it. In other words, you can uh, turn this into a competitive advantage. So who should attend? Uh, the program is ideal for technology leaders, for professionals, consultants, who are trying to get insights into organizational strategy. So to me, data strategy is one of the parts of the corporate corporate strategy, right? It's one of the pillars these days that you should use. Uh, we'll talk about leveraging best practices in data um, in data projects uh, because uh, data strategy starts with data capture, for example. You need to have infrastructure for this. You need to be then uh, purposely uh, using it to derive insights out of it and then make decisions. So whichever position you are, you can use this to your advantage to transition to a career in data strategy, for example. So we'll talk about this or... You can be a business leader who wants to be a bit more tech savvy, and you can uh, talk to data scientists and your technology department and guide them. And obviously, uh, you with your business acumen, you can uh, drive the projects further. So with that, I just wanted to hand over to Richard, and uh, we'll now hear from him a bit more about the program itself. Also, if, don't hesitate to drop the questions that you might have in the chat. We uh, come to them at the suitable time, or we also will have a Q&A session at the end. But in any case, don't hesitate. This is meant to be a live interactive session. So Richard, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, please tell us uh, more about the program. Thank you, Rudy. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. If you happen to be uh, calling from different time zones around the world, this program has been uh, turned out to be very international over the last few cohorts. We've had people from all around the world, all kinds of industries, all kinds of functions within those industries, profit, nonprofit, government, different industries. Welcome. I'm Richard Hunsinger. The takeaways from this course, let me uh, describe, that, describe that first and then I'll dive down into some of the, the details about it. But the, at the high level, 
the takeaways you have from this course are will be uh, frameworks and methodologies to actually develop a data strategy for your organization. That is that that is our main goal. So that is to transfer to you knowledge and skills and some um, thoughts and insights about how to actually do it. Uh, as such, we'll be uh, building a roadmap or a, a data strategy in, in particular for your particular company and your industry. Uh, that takes the form of your capstone project along the way. I shouldn't say along the way, but as part of that, a component of that is understanding how to manage data, so data management in general, and other aspects uh, around, around that. Uh, how to assemble a team, how to deal with the, uh, how to address the, uh, the, the cultural issues, organizational issues, technology issues, all the things that go into making your data strategy successful. And then ultimately, you should be able to derive value from executing the data strategy. We have uh, what we think is a comprehensive curriculum, comprehensive in the sense that we start from uh, a beginning point, uh, assuming that you're very interested, uh, that you have some experience uh, in, this, in this area, but that you don't necessarily um, know everything about it. We're not going to be jumping into uh, deep technical aspects of the data strategy uh, process and data management, uh, but rather, we'll be looking at this from a business perspective, assuming that you've got some business background, some technology background, but coming into it from a business, uh, looking at it as, as a business problem for uh, for you to solve. Uh, right, we'll be dealing with, uh, we'll be introducing some cutting edge approaches. Uh, that is uh, cutting edge in the sense of new technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, but also cutting edge in the sense of just best practices about how to go about Already even starting uh, getting a data strategy uh, together. We'll talk about some practical tools, um, actually a, a large emphasis on, on practical knowledge and practical best practices. There's a little bit of theory in this, uh, in this course, but the emphasis and most of the uh, work that we'll be doing is around leveraging the best practices, the things that have uh, that have been proven to be uh, successful, the, the approaches that have been proven to be successful uh, in this this kind of uh, in, in, in this space. Real world app applicability, uh, again, practical applications uh, that you can apply in your in your real companies. And that should hopefully make for long-term value in your career and be relevant to your particular organization. The curriculum then in, in more detail. <clears throat> we've organized, that is, uh, we've developed this course in organized it into seven modules. We'll be introducing uh, one module per week over seven weeks. The first module we call Introduction to Data Strategy. And this is intended to get your creative juices flowing. We'll be looking at uh, data strategy from several different perspectives with several uh, talk about, introduce us or share with you, I should say, uh, several anecdotes, uh, have some discussions about things that uh, you could do, things that uh, you might find more interesting, that you might find less interesting, sort of a variety of, of different ways of thinking about data strategy to, to get us started. Then by module two, we quickly get into a specific methodology that is, how do you actually do that now? I have all these ideas about uh, where, how I want to kind of go about it. How would I do that explicitly? How do I do that exactly? We have a methodology to share with you. This is not intended to be, or is not, not claimed to be the best methodology, rather an aggregation of several methodologies that you may have been exposed to, that we have researched, that we have, uh, we have looked into, trying to take the best elements, um, as many of the best elements uh, from various methodologies taken from different books, from different consulting firms, uh, and put them in one place for you and organized in such a way that hopefully you can, uh, th that we'll be able to uh, actually use that. Now, it might not be uh, exactly right, or all elements of it might not be exactly right for your organization. That's another thing that will, another aspect of, of what we'll be 
looking at is what parts of this methodology are appropriate for your particular uh, business needs for your particular organization. Okay, that'll be sort of the, the recipe or uh, the, the methodology for how to develop a data strategy. To be successful, it takes more than just following a recipe, going down a, going down a checklist. You need to know something about all in depth, in more depth about all of the elements that go into the data strategy uh, as you're executing it. That's what the rest of the course will be. So we dive down then for the next several weeks into specific aspects of the data strategy and some context for different elements of the data strategy. Data management is module three. That's about dealing with, this, well, as it says, managing, managing the data. We'll look at um, categories of data. That is, we'll call out how not all data is equal. It has different purposes, uh, different functions. Uh, we'll be able to identify what the different kinds of data are and how they should be interacting with each other and how you go about how you go about managing that in, a, in an operation. Module four, if data management is the game that you're playing, uh, module four is about the rules of the game. Uh, so data governance, quality, security, what are the rules that you need to put in place in order to ensure that your, or to uh, uh, um, yeah, ensure or, or drive uh, effective uh, data, data management? Now, some of the rules might be excessive. Some of the rules might be lacking. That's an aspect of what we'll talk about too. How much is too much? How much is not enough? For the rules of data management, that's data governance, quality, and security. Module five, there it is. Oh, we'll look at specific technologies. Now, we are not going to uh, be looking at specific products. So this is, we're not going to be endorsing or using uh, specific tools in this course. Rather, we're going to be talking about what technology can do for you around data management and data governance and, and, and security. So we'll be uh, helping you um, organize your thoughts around um, criteria for what to look for, for criteria about what to look for in your uh, in the technologies that are going to be most appropriate for for your organization and for your data strategy. What technologies do you need? Do you need uh, one size fits all from a vendor that says I can do everything for you, or do you need specific um, sort of point solutions? Uh, do you need to integrate them together? We'll we'll look at what, what questions you should be asking as you are selecting the tools to actually implement your data strategy. Uh, module six, then we look at the data organization and culture. There are best practices uh, that we've gleaned that we'd like to share with you uh, that um, uh, increase the probability of success. Uh, that is, if you organize in in, in certain ways that are appropriate to your data strategy, data strategy is likely to be more successful. Not enough to say, you know, everybody should just have a good, in the company should just have a good attitude about this, but rather we'll structure the organization so that that comes naturally. Um, it's not going to be, this one is not going to be a specific recipe uh, or, or methodology about how to do that, but rather we'll just discuss some, some overall best practices, things that you can sort of take into account and hopefully uh, uh, incorporate into your, into your strategy that way. Module seven, we wrap up the course. After you have uh, gone through all of these details uh, about how to actually implement your data strategy, we look at some of the things that you might want to do uh, to take advantage of your data that you haven't thought of before using the latest in data science, specifically uh, what we're now calling artificial intelligence and other aspects of data science, different kinds of analytic, analytic approaches uh, for doing predictive modeling and prescriptive modeling uh, in, in particular. We'll talk about some of those techniques, some of the machine learning um, uh, technologies that are available to you that you may find, uh, may find are actually quite suited for the kinds of things that you would like to accomplish in your organization. So that's the curriculum, seven, uh, seven weeks. And I think we go through enough that you can, you know, start from the beginning and get all the way through a relatively detailed uh, plan or roadmap 
for your particular data strategy. That is the capstone project then. There will be, um, I won't call it homework, but there'll be, be assignments uh, for you to do with each of these, these modules. They're designed so that they sort of build on each other. And as you're doing the different assignments, those are all going to be elements of your data strategy. And by the time you're done with that, you put it all together by week seven, and that's your capstone project. That is data strategy for your organization. We've had, we've had really good luck uh, with, with this approach. We've gone, uh, some of the students say, well, I, I, I've sketched it out, so I know, I have a good idea about where to start. I know where to, uh, I, I know uh, what to uh, present and uh, pitch to the rest of my organization. Uh, and then some, some students, uh, say, I've, I've got the whole thing already. Thank you, thank you very much. I was going to uh, hopefully learn how to do this and I've already done it. They've, they've got, it, got it all ready to go and ready to uh, implement. Okay, that's the capstone project. We will be presenting some cases. There'll be many cases, uh, small cases, uh, business cases uh, throughout the course, but we'll have uh, a, a, a few sessions, uh, four sessions in particular, with some larger, more formal cases. These are meant not so much as to understand what's going on with these specific four companies. Rather, these serve as anchors for discussions about how you can compare what you're doing and what your needs are to what some other companies have done. And we have a variety of uh, uh, situations in these case studies from, I won't tell you which ones are which yet, uh, but uh, they, they range from a really successful data strategy initiation and implementation to mm, perhaps not so successful. And you can we can we can discuss what the difference is, what what worked well and what did not work so well. Okay, those are the case studies. Program faculty. Uh, I serve as the lead for this board. We, I developed this course in collaboration with my colleagues, uh, Garish Venkat and Tom Lee. I think it's uh, been a really good team uh, for this kind of a course uh, in the sense that uh, Garish has, uh, is a, has, a, has a very accomplished uh, background in industry. Uh, he right, ne right now, he's the chief technology officer at Agilon Health. He was uh, previously the vice president for Watson development at IBM. And he's worked for, uh, he's worked in um, other, other organizations as a chief data officer. Uh, so he's got the background in industry and the currency uh, in, in industry. He's doing it right now. So we know that the uh, material that we've put together is what's actually being used uh, right now. Tom uh, is, uh, from, Takes, uh, is coming from the uh, perhaps the more academic uh, perspective. Uh, Tom is a, an expert. He's a researcher in uh, technology innovation or how companies innovate uh, sort of in general. So he brings that perspective to the course. And then I'm somewhere in the middle. I have a background in industry, uh, decades uh, in, in industry, and also uh, at this point uh, now, uh, decades in um, in academia, uh, teaching these topics and and doing the research, so I try to uh, kind of glue those glue those pieces together. So I think we have a a good balance of practical. This is what we've seen actually works out in in industry. Balance between that and we've thought about it from an academic perspective and a research perspective to sort of organize the thoughts and see how it all, all fits together uh, logically. That's the program faculty. Actually, uh, if you go back for just a moment, I should comment on the, uh, the faculty. These are just the three uh, faculty that have uh, developed the course. Delivery of the course, we are joined by, uh, we call them learning facilitators. This is an excellent, excellent staff. I'm so impressed. Uh, with the people that we have uh, delivering as different aspects of the course. They provide office hours, they provide special sessions, they provide one-on-one, -on -one, or they're available for one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings with, with you. Uh, these are uh, 
people that are um, that are highly educated and they're they're practitioners now. They've got a lot of experience and they've been thinking a lot about data strategy in particular. They do this kind of thing for a living, and uh, I'm so pleased that they're um, you know basically willing to <laughs> come work with us and share uh, their their thoughts and their guidance uh, with you as well. So we have a we have a large faculty uh, available for you. Okay. In addition to that, we have guest speakers, and these have been really, really well received. Uh, I do interviews with uh, with with these people, uh, and they tell us about their experience. Jonathan Ballon is a chief digital officer. Uh, it was at uh, Electric Mile Last Solutions. Uh, previously, he was uh, vice president at Cisco. He was a vice president of uh, technology uh, or a GM a general manager at. Uh, Intel. Uh, he's been the uh, chief data officer at GE. Uh, so he has uh, much experience and perspective, actually, as, as they all do. So I interview uh, him and the others, get their ideas about what works, what doesn't, what's important, what's not important. It's The, the feedback we've gotten from the students uh, is that this, it's, it's very good, it's very useful uh, for them to compare the methodology that we present in the course to what these practitioners are actually doing. And we see that uh, they take some of the elements and use them very well. And some of, the, some of them favor some aspects of the methodology more than others, but you can actually see for real, how does it, how does it really get applied in, in real work? Okay, Phil Kim is the Chief Data, Anal uh, Chief Data and Analytics Officer at Public Storage. Uh, Karthik Suri, uh, he also has a background as a, uh, General Manager, or I should say a Chief Data Officer at uh, General Electric as well. Uh, Jan Schultes from the Netherlands uh, has a background. He's a, he was a founder of Xilab, uh, who uh, that, that company, uh, I'm going to be talking with him about uh, privacy uh, in particular, uh, data privacy. Uh, his company, Xilab, uh, was a, was a primary vendor to the United Nations, uh, applying um, uh, applying artificial intelligence technology to uh, things like character recognition and uh, 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 doc how do you say it? Uh, uh, what do they call it the documents uh, with uh, in the in the in the in criminal cases in in, in the United Nations, mm -hmm. gathering gathering evidence and processing uh, mountains and mountains of evidence with technology to synthesize and summarize. Um, all the evidence, documentary evidence that uh, they, they have for uh, for various uh, cases. He's talking about privacy in particular. Sham Chotai, um, Chief Digital Officer at New Context, he also was a Vice President at Hewlett Packard. Uh, he was a actually his his resume goes his resume goes on and on. Right. So he was a Chief Data Officer at General Electric also. Uh, he worked for a gold company uh, implementing uh, artificial intelligence to search for uh, gold and gold mines. He's got quite a uh, quite a fun uh, background uh, to talk to. Ralph Asivas was the founder of Informatica. Now he is the uh, founder and chief executive officer of HackerStrike. I'm going to be talking to him about cybersecurity. And Mike Parsons is general manager at Air New Zealand. We'll be talking to him from New Zealand about applying uh, the, a data strategy and implementing a data strategy in the in the airline business. So uh, a variety of backgrounds, you get to hear from them directly. Okay, think, well, great I, stuff. Yeah, I think I've, I think I've covered uh, I, I think I've covered the program. I'm, I'm happy to take I'm happy to take questions also uh, after the uh, after Rudy has a few more words here about the actually signing Absolutely. up for the program. Absolutely. But I, I will take a question here from Miguel. He's already asking for you know, live sessions. What time zone are we accommodating? So first of all, you will see lectures being recorded so you can watch them at your own uh, pace. So don't take live sessions as the lecture, right? So the live session assumes that you've already seen the Richard's videos, interviews and other faculties. And then you can have a live discussion with your learning facilitator or with the faculty about what you have seen and you can dive deeper into this. So 
that's one thing but uh in any case uh the scheduling tries to be as smart as possible so that means of course if you are close to berkeley this will work for you very well, very well but also should work for people from asia and from europe so we try to do it depending on where you are i'm in europe uh, so we try to do it around lunchtime or early afternoon so it could be morning in california and it could be, you know, a different kind of time, of course, in Asia. But we'll figure it out. Uh, in any case, if some of the times don't work for you, uh, all the sessions are recorded. You will get the recording. You will get the slides. And uh, and then, uh, you know, you can go from there. You can also, you know, we will get you a link to talk to an advisor. You talk about this uh, logistical things in more detail. Um, but uh, coming back to the slides and talking about the certificate. Because, uh, you know, I know some people don't want a certificate and they are here for the knowledge and I am with you completely. But, you know, in this uh, life, uh, we live in the life of signaling, right? So uh, people don't know uh, that you have spent so much uh, great time with Richard and his colleagues on this course unless you have a certificate. So I would say it so sounds like a cliche, but the more you put in, the more you get out of it. And you could uh, very easily, once you put all this effort into this, might as well just complete it and get uh, get the digital certificate of completion that uh, people typically showcase on your on their LinkedIn profile or on their resume, and uh, it has a generally very good, uh, very good uh, uh, generates very good reaction. And this is also uh, a first step to get your benefits as uh, associated alumni of Berkeley. Uh, it's not only after this course, I must say, so you need to then complete the certificate of business excellence. So but this is the first step if you finish this course, if you uh, get the certificate. And then, of course, once you uh, uh, finish the COBE or certificate of business excellence, you can then uh, join alumni events. You get the information, communication from Berkeley uh, that typically only alumni would get. And also you get a discount on Berkeley executive education programs. You'll get the discount on uh, further eligible programs as well uh, related to this. Uh, so the point is uh, there will be executive education and also online programs. And there will be, uh, I think, different discounts here. Um, I already see more questions here. So Suketu is asking, will program cover track, um, monitor, and success of the data strategy? So maybe that's actually yeah, can, a question for you, Richard. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can address that. So this... Uh, this course is primarily the main focus of, of this course is on the planning part of the of the data strategy, how to get the strategy, the strategy into existence, uh, vet it as uh, being uh, as a vet it as being uh, valuable or able to uh, produce value, and then how and then planning how to put things uh, elements. Mm, how to implement aspects of that in, in your organization. It's not meant to be a project management course uh, per se. So it's not focusing on the uh, details of tracking or the, the detailed aspects of how you would, would track that. And that said, uh, the cases that we talk about, uh, we show the data strategy, how it was created uh, for various, various companies, for various organizations and how it was implemented, sometimes implemented very successfully, sometimes implemented not so successfully. And we talk about and discuss how they measured the success. So in that sense, we will get some, we will get some exposure and we'll have some uh, work on how to uh, monitor or how to measure the uh, success of the success of the of your program, of your strategy. All right, so once uh, once again, very practical, hands-on, something realistic that you can take back uh, to work and uh, do something uh, tangible with it, right? So uh, here's another question from Miguel. He's asking how much of this program is refreshed towards gen AI, gen generative AI topics? There's a lot of pressure to smarten up in this area, lots of buzz around what to do and how in terms of platforms, uh, choices of service models, use cases. Right. Uh, so, uh, so AI has become the uh, the new poster child uh, for uh, for all things good about data. Just within the last few months, even uh, this course is about data strategy in general, not just about using generative AI. Uh, so, it's for 
it's for companies that um, maybe have a data strategy already and want to improve it, uh, for companies that don't have a data strategy at all and want to get in on it. And jumping right to generative AI uh, applications may or may not be the right thing for, for your, your company. Uh, you know, we, we hear in the press that it says everybody, every company had, had better incorporate that into their data strategy. To some extent, uh, yes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, your strategy doesn't necessarily have to be focused on that. Okay. That said, for some of your organizations, this is going to be very applicable and very, uh, and, uh, and very important. So we'll be talking about that in general when we're talking about the, the methodology, and we'll talk about it more in module seven when we talk about new technologies you might be able to take advantage of at the leading edge, what I call at the leading edge. And we'll also talk about AI technologies specifically or explicitly uh, in some of the case studies. So the, the, the case studies, uh, a couple of them uh, that we'll be going through are looking at how AI was implemented or how it was incorporated into the, as an element of the data strategy to, uh, to start with. So in that sense, we'll be doing, doing some of that. All right, so it's it's a much wider course than just generative AI. Generative AI is a subset of it, and uh, we'll be able to cover that as well, right? Yep, that's the idea. Okay, so Vikas is saying uh, or asking, uh, I realize the data strategy is part of DX programs. Am I right? If yes, how this course will help me in DX journey and any capstone projects which I can flesh out on my CV? I would presume. Uh, if you uh, if, if if you have on your resume that you or your your LinkedIn profile uh, that you have uh, developed a data strategy or contributed to your company's data strategy, and you can point to specific elements uh, of that that you were specifically uh, responsible for, I would think that could only help. All right, and Miguel is following up on the general AI question. Uh, he says, my question is geared towards if there is specificity, some within the program on Gen AI. I think you said that it's addressed to VR case studies. Uh, it's a, at, yes, in the case it's addressed in the in the case studies at the business level, uh, and it is uh, addressed somewhat in the uh, in the in the seventh module in the seventh week when we look at new kinds of technologies available. Well, I say new kinds of technology, the, the, the leading edge technologies, including AI and other kinds of machine learning and, and gen AI. I'll put in one caveat there, uh, the, uh, uh, or I'll add one caveat to that, uh, which is that you have, you have access to me and the other faculty, and I teach that topic at Berkeley. So it's not necessarily uh, meant to be a, a, a large part of, of this course, but you have access to, to me and the other faculty who have uh, some technical expertise in that. And uh, you know, we, are, we, we, are, we are resources for you. Okay. And you've also seen in the chat, uh, the link uh, where you can book the time with an advisor. So you can have a follow-up discussion. Uh, you can see, the slides, uh, you will uh, get the slides afterwards, you'll get the recording. And if you want to have a follow-up discussion with an advisor, you use that link on Calendly, just book the time there. Uh, you see it again here. You can also apply for the program uh, directly using that link as well. So uh, don't hesitate, uh, find out more if you want to, or just uh, you know look at the next uh, cohorts or courses that are coming up uh, and uh, book your time uh with us and uh, looking forward to that but uh if you have any other questions please again uh, don't hesitate and uh use that time that's why we're here um and uh, we'd like to hear more questions from you in the meantime what i wanted to say is as a summary um this is a two months learning journey uh we talked about seven modules so seven weeks we talked about four to six week uh, four to six hour investment per week uh, cutting edge curriculum, fantastic faculty, which has a mix of being uh, strong in academics, in business, and in technology, right? So this is what you want, just like Berkeley, innovation, entrepreneurship, technology, and the business. This is a business course about strategy. 
So it's not going to be about coding. Uh, so I don't think you need to uh, make sure that you now have access to GitHub and uh, make sure that you have uh, some coding uh, examples there. No, it's more about uh, data strategy governance, right? It's about how to work with data so that you can derive tangible uh, benefits from it as a business person, business leader. Um, David, what's the cost of this program? Maybe the best way to uh, follow up on this, if you click on that link in the chat, then you should have all the details when you go for registration. Okay. And coming back to this also, if you take one of these, then you take uh, several ones of those uh, courses which are related to COBE, so Certificate of Business Excellence, you can get the alumni uh, status, and then you can get discounts on future courses as well. So uh, once again, we talked about questions. Uh, you've already done that, but uh, here are the links which you have in the chat as well. But if you are uh, reviewing this deck afterwards, you can just click on the link. Uh, the blue, obviously, uh, the blue the blue font uh, right uh, leads you to uh, the brochure, to the registration site or you can schedule a call and to follow up with one of our advisors. Question here from Vikas. I'm a beginner as far as data and analytics is concerned. Is this course the right course for me? Uh, yes. Uh, oh. uh, I don't think I need to, I don't think I need to qualify that further. We've tried to design the course so that it works at all levels of uh, all levels of management and aspiring aspiring management. That is that there is something something in it for people that, for those of you that are already leading organizations and you'd like maybe leading a technical organization and you'd like to know more about the business aspects or the business perspective on how to put a data strategy together. And for those of you who are uh, you know, running a business organization, you want to know something more technical about it, but not down to the level of actually doing the technical implementation uh, yourself, but have a, have a better idea about what's involved uh, with that. So that you know what questions to ask, you know what kind of assumptions are being made, you've got an, uh, an understanding or a context for uh, evaluating um, how successful you think your strategy is, is likely to be. And that works at works at all levels. Uh, some of the material then will, if if you've got a very technical background, you'll, you'll say, you know, for for perhaps in the data management module, you'll say, well, I know that already. I do that for a living, so that might be just reinforcement as opposed to uh, learning something new. But other aspects of the of the program would be very valuable for you, and then vice versa. If you don't know that much about uh, technically what's going on, but you you want to, then you'll learn from. Uh, you, you learn those aspects, and then you'll be able to, um, um, uh, you'll know something al already about some other aspects. Which brings me to a point. In fact, I, I wanted to make that point because I checked my notes and I, I, I didn't mention this explicitly. Uh, I was telling you about the faculty available to you, the teaching staff available to, to you, the other, and, and the guest speakers. The other resource you, you have is each other. We've gotten a lot of really good feedback uh, about how much students have learned from other students. Some of you know more or less about any particular topic. And we have you share um, your experience in the form of office hours, in the form of live discussions, in the form of assignments uh, that are uh, um, where, you, where, where you post uh, your uh, opinions and your experience and share your experience with others, and you can learn from, and, and you do uh, learn from others. And you can ask questions of, uh, of other people too, uh, from anywhere in the world at different levels of management, uh, in completely different in completely different industries, in your particular level, in your particular industry. Uh, we, we've uh, it's, it's it's I think I think it's a wonderful resource, and we've gotten very good feedback about how valuable that is. Absolutely. So the course facilitates networking uh, among the learners or the participants, of course, uh, because that reminds me of uh, my time on a, a business ex a school exchange many, many years ago, where the professor said, you didn't come here to learn from books, you came here to learn from other people. 
So we'll do the same here in the online setting and even better so because uh, we can reach more people that uh, maybe uh, couldn't travel half the world to take this course, but they can do it from comfort of their home. So uh, you will be able to uh, network with one another through different ways, as, as Richard said, office hours, discussion forums, uh, and also uh, you will have uh, access to the course website typically for quite some time. And you can find each other there. Sometimes the cohort set up a LinkedIn group, uh, like a virtual Rolodex off the site as well, but uh, you will have plenty of possibilities um, to network with one another using the course website, which is only for the learners. So once again, um, I hope that you enjoyed this information session. Uh, the idea here is uh, how to create a data strategy if you don't have one, how to refine it if your strategy maybe doesn't work. And the uh, idea is, well, this is for business. So in other words, uh, the businesses are here mostly to make money. These days also, obviously, to satisfy other wider uh, group of stakeholders, but it's about being commercially successful. And how do you turn data into gold, right? Uh, and this is what Richard will tell you uh, because he's an alchemist also, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, that's another I, way I to- I hadn't heard to that description before, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, it's about being practical and um, that's why it's great that you will have also a uh, uh, perfect example from Richard. Uh, you will have all these classmates as a resource as well with plenty of experience from all around the world, from different industries. You will have guest speakers, you have learning facilitators, a number of group, a uh, number of faculty with different focus uh, focus areas. So I think all of this uh, hopefully sounds very appealing to you. So you can click on that link you see here, uh, emrt.us slash bh dast apply now, or you schedule a call. Uh, either on the links that you have in the chat or you get the slides afterwards and you can click on that uh, blue underlined text and uh, you'll get there. Otherwise, of course, you can search for Berkeley Exec Ed Data Strategy Leveraging Data as a Competitive Advantage. So thank you so much and uh, hopefully see you soon. Thank you all. Hope to see you in class. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, everyone.